Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever this video finds you, I hope you're having a rad time. I'm The Figure Dude, and on today's Action Figure Showcase, we're gonna take a look at The Authority. Without further ado, let's talk about some figures. Dude. <laughs> Like I said today, I'm going to take a look at The Authority, and The Authority started out Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, and maybe Corporate Kane? I don't remember exactly how it just started off in the first place. Stephanie and Triple H were obviously already office people um, at um, CFO, is that what I think Triple H was? Anyway, the... the um, Authority storyline had Triple H and Stephanie McMahon and the rest of their cronies trying to stop Daniel Bryan from winning the title, going on to main event WrestleMania and all of that. And they will tell you they did this intentionally, but if you watched during that time, it didn't, it, it sure did not feel intentional. Um, it felt like their hand was forced and eventually they had to go with what they did for WrestleMania 30. If you have not, if you didn't watch then, it is worth going back and watching, even just like going through the sequence of pay-per-views, watching everything leading up to WrestleMania, and really not knowing if Daniel Bryan was going to be able to finish the job the way he did. Um, spoiler alert, I guess. But um, it was really good. It's a lot better looking back on hindsight, knowing it turned out the way a lot of us wanted to. But leading up, it, it was convoluted. There was a lot of just stupid parts of the storyline um nothing like what we saw planned out with the bloodline and all of that it just seemed like it was a a week to week thing everyone wanted dana bryan and um the higher ups of wwe didn't nonetheless i wanted to piece together all of the authority and um i kind of have everyone that was part of it or at least had a hand in it during that time because I, I like I like to keep them in a neat little group on the shelf. So, starting off today, we've got a basic Stephanie McMahon, as well as a Battle Pack Triple H. The Battle Pack Triple H is one of the best Battle Pack figures, main event pack, showdown packs, whatever you call them. Um, two pack figures we've ever gotten. I really like the head sculpt on this one, which was used on a lot of his elites. And then it's on the suited body, which might be a little tall for Triple H. Um, but it came in a double pack with Daniel Bryan, and the Daniel Bryan is just a normal basic, but this is essentially, like, elite level. It's, um, got, like, the build-a-figure parts, um, the previous one, so it's not double-jointed on the arms, but the legs move, have the full build-a-figure suited, um, range of motion, the double-jointed legs, just a fantastic figure, and I do have some others. I have, like, the Ring Gear Triple H here, but when I think of authority, I can't have them without... Stephanie and Triple H here. Next up is the Elite Triple H that I think this is what he wore at WrestleMania when he fought Daniel Bryan. So um, we already had gotten a Triple H kind of like this in black and silver. And I guess I don't know if I don't think I have that one. Just trying to glance over at my shelf while I'm talking here. Um, I don't believe I own the entrance gear for that Triple H. Oh, doesn't look like it. Anyway, um, with the red and gold here, I thought it was really cool. He came out on a throne flanked by Sasha Banks, Alexa Bliss, and Charlotte, I believe. They took off all his um, gear here, and then he made his way to the ring. So I will show you guys all of that as well. It's just a big rubber piece. Which I, I, I'm i almost positive it's just a repaint of the black and silver version we got. Which I I don't remember which WrestleMania he wore that at. But it was a relatively plain Triple H here. Nothing too crazy about it. It was a very... It, like, at WrestleMania, Triple H started off... WrestleMania 30, opening match, him and Daniel Bryan. If Daniel Bryan won, he went to the main event. And it didn't feel like a big like it was a big match 
but also it just felt like the precursor. So at the same time, I didn't go into it like being real into it. Um, I didn't know how much like effort Triple H was gonna be putting into it. I didn't know if he, I didn't know what was gonna happen. I just wanted Daniel Bryan to win. And um, even though Triple H, like I said, it kind of came out in a plain attire, I thought, okay, maybe we'll get something out of this. I thought it'd be kind of quick. It was fantastic. Anyway, that's just the Triple H here. We have so much to get to. Next up are the cronies, the the kind of flunkies of the authority at at that time, kind of. Big Show <laughs> the Big Show was like a running joke during the authority era. He literally had heel and face turns like every week. It was something different. He cried a lot. It just was it what it wasn't good. Um <laughs> While he wasn't good in the authority necessarily, this figure, I think, is his best elite. I like the blue on the attire. Like, it pops more than the normal, just, like, plain black we've gotten. Um, I like that the boots still have that, are, like, bluish. And, like, they capture that instead of just giving him the black. Um, the head sculpt actually might have changed. But my favorite part about this is the knee pads. They gave him these like one-off super long knee pads that cover everything, but that's what he wears because he's got terrible knees. And I just thought that was such a nice detail added to it. Um, I've talked before about how I think in one of my PG era showcase videos talking about his figures during the PG era, because like he, he kind of just had a different look. He had different camo and I think that presents really well in the figures. And then the cane here is also head swapped. I gave him a little bit bigger of a head. It was from one of his elite figures, um, but this was a basic as well. You can see it's got the basic torso, but then just like Triple H, he's got those suited legs that um, have really good articulation. So corporate cane, I actually enjoyed. It was just a way different departure than unmasked or masked or whatever version of cane we'd had. Him in a suit and tie, which that's just his career now. Um, I just I thought it was a a cool switch because Kane was just kind of like at the end of his run, um, he'd become stale, and then we got this version of him, which I enjoyed. But I think this is again one of the like better basics we've gotten. I really liked it. I found it on Black Friday at Kmart, so if that tells you anything about how long ago it was. But then this Elite Big Show as well, fantastic. Next up, we have the sort of modern look. I mean, modern, even though this was like 10 years ago now, which blows my mind. Um, modern New Age Outlaws. So for a brief time, um, Road Dog and Billy Gunn were back. They feuded. So at WrestleMania 30, they'd actually had a match with um, The Shield. They got squashed. Um, Billy ruptured his spleen, and then I think that was the end of their WWE run, I'm pretty sure. Um, so then I, we got a battle pack. The battle pack had the correct attire for Billy Gunn, which, um, I, I'm sure he wore some different ones, but he had more of like a light blue teal kind of color. And then Road Dog, this, so I did, this is a complete custom for the Road Dog. I used the arms from that Road Dog figure and then um, I actually used a head from one of his Legends figures, and I just shaved off the um, hair on top and then painted the fade on him, or the buzz cut on him. So um, that one, like, actually, I think it was a whole Legends figure that I completely redid. The Billy Gunn was also a Legends figure from the um, DX Invasion um, attire. So with that one, I swapped some different knee pads on him because he was wearing some bulkier knee pads. Um, I gave him the battle pack head. The boots I swapped out as well, instead of just the plain black boots. And I just kind of fixed it up enough to pass as the, um, like, 2014 or whatever, uh, Billy Gunn. So I've, I guess I've got a few different versions of the New Age Outlaws, but this was the oldest or most recent version of them. 
All right, so speaking of the shield, here are kind of some fix-ups that I did for my collection. So the shield had their like initial run where they came in, just dominated everyone, um, won the tag belts, the US belt for Dean Ambrose or John Moxley, and then they kind of cooled off for a little bit. So I'm pretty sure the story went that they refused to lose or drop the belt or something to, um, I can't remember who it was a smaller, uh, someone less relevant than them at the time. The, the Shield was so hot and they kind of got heat for that. So they ended up losing their titles on like SmackDown or Raw or something instead of like a big pay-per-view. And then they like got kind of cooled off for a little bit. So at some point they were kind of like the bodyguards for the entirety of the authority, which they like, they were just kind of background characters. They didn't do anything for a while which I think is okay. Sometimes you have that with wrestlers where you can't just keep them um, hot the whole all the time, can't keep them in the main event all the time. So you cool them off, give them a little break, and then you strap the rocket back to them and let them go. And that's kind of what happened with the Shield. So um, they had like their second wind after their little run with the authority um, before eventually breaking up. But with this version, I wanted to just make them a little bit different than their debut figures. So the um, Ambrose is just the plain um, like Under Armour shirt. The Roman, I took that vest from a basic. I don't. I think it was just a basic, um, and then gave him the bare arms. I'm trying to think of if it. it it was a basic. I don't remember if it was a single basic or a battle pack. Um, and then the Seth Rollins, I wanted to give him the all black Under Armour sleeve look. So just gave him some um, arms. And I don't remember who those came from. Or actually, I think I got this in a lot. Someone had done the fix up. And they also cut like the bottom of the vest. So it doesn't, um, it's not all just one big chunk. It look. It has pieces hanging the way it's supposed to look. So in the original version we got of him, like all of this stuff in here is all like plastic and someone just cut it so the straps hung down, which I thought was awesome. I didn't even realize like looking at it that that was a thing, but I think it looks fantastic. And I think I just put the plain um, black haired head sculpt, which I don't know why. I probably just need to find a, a blonde haired Seth to throw on there. But that was my kind of like updated shield just to fit in um, the authority or like kind of just like later into their run. Next up are a couple of fantastic figures here. First off, we have Blue Tista, which was just a... It was it was an unfortunate thing to happen because I'm pretty sure it was the three-on-three six-man tag match with Evolution and the Shield. And um, somehow Blue Tista is like the lasting image or like lasting joke from that match. And the match was awesome. It was so good. The Shield beat Evolution clean. Um, Randy didn't have the titles anymore. Triple H wrestled the match. Um, it, it just, it was fantastic. But for some reason, I like, I don't even think this is a bad attire necessarily. I don't, maybe if he would have just done like some black sleeves or something. But Batista got absolutely roasted for his attire choice. And I think part of it too was that at that point in his run, people were just kind of over him because they wanted Dan O'Brien to win at Mania. And then they were mad that Batista was the guy that was originally pegged to be in there. So um, from then on, he just got booed relentlessly. Um, I think it, he was actually supposed to... I want to say they were going to have him like fight Brian... No, oh, I could just be thinking wrong. Scratch that idea. Anyway, the Blue Tisa figure is awesome. I think that was Elite 33... And I liked that they, I think this was, I don't know if this was the first time they'd used this torso. I know they also used it on Sting around the same time. So one or the other, one of those two had it first. But I like this attire for Batista at the time. And his legs are a little bit skinnier than like the Triple H ripped up legs. And just formula wise, I thought it was really nice. With the greatest hits, we got the same thing with the double jointed arms, which I thought looked good. Um, just didn't think it was worth the upgrade. I thought this was a fine enough looking figure. And then Randy Orton here, all his figures are the same. Just the tights are a little bit different. I did give this one double jointed arms. And then I swapped this head from 
a basic of his. I really like this head sculpt. I think it's a good one. I think they've reused it recently. I'm pretty sure I saw it somewhere on, on one of his figures. Um, but they do Randy Orton figures well. I do think they need to make a bigger one. I think I've always thought his torso needed to be wider. Like he needed to have the DDP torso. Um, but even like they, they made his arms big for a little bit. And then when they switched to double jointed, he went back to having skinny arms. So I think they haven't quite nailed his um, body type. His ultimate addition with a little bit thicker torso, I think is a little better, but still he's got the smaller arms. And I think they kind of need to go back to the board with Randy. But um, here for what we were working with, I think this Randy looks good. And like I said, I love the Batista. Next up, we have the post-Shield Seth Rollins here, and you can see my custom, as well as the original Elite 37, I think it is. Elite 30, yeah, Elite 37, I think, Seth Rollins. And he, the my custom, I made on his updated body mold, and the older one, I gave him bigger arms at the time, but there wasn't much you could do. Like you couldn't just give him bigger legs. I did think when he like he switched to this attire, it looked kind of goofy, but I got used to it. I don't mind it at all. Um, the original came with the vest and I did have the original Seth Rollins, the money in the bank Seth Rollins that had the skinnier legs in the gold and um, black attire here. But like I said, too skinny. So I wanted to update it. Um, outside of that, like, I like that they gave us the vests for him for a while. The, um, sculpts I thought were pretty decent. I did put the money in the bank with him and I gave, and like, this one's got the double jointed arms. This was the first, or not double jointed, the pinless arms. That was their first attempt at pinless arms, which I didn't mind, but some people really hated. Um, the money in the bank briefcases, I'm pretty sure were like chases that you could get in packages. This one, um... I can't remember who I took the heads, what figure that had this head sculpt originally. Um, I did use the crotch piece from that original Money in the Bank Seth, just painted the gold, painted up that vest, and I'm very happy with how that all turned out. Um, lastly, though, so I have to get Seth in here, as well as his henchman. J and J security. So we've got Jamie Noble and Joey Mercury as his security guards. I thought this was gold. I thought they were fantastic bodyguards since they were smaller than him and didn't stop anyone from anything. But I loved this battle pack as well. We got the head sculpts with the earpieces on them, both of them on suited bodies. For a run, they that battle pack run was just banging for a while they did awesome i i really like almost all these uh like authority basics and battle packs that we got of them i think are fantastic but um i'm gonna get the whole group together here you can see everyone and then we will be on our way but there they all are the authority in their entirety and i could be missing some something i could be forgetting um but like I said, I this was one that I had fun piecing all together. Um, it's not... I, I have a little more nostalgia for the corporation growing up with them. And these guys just, to me, always felt like the knockoff corporation, even though um, maybe like there was a little more star power in this group. But nonetheless i had fun showcasing them today so um i'm gonna try to get to more like stables and um tag teams i don't know different little stuff like that a little different than just um going through the collection by era but i don't know if you guys have some more ideas i am going to do a new collection tour now that i have moved everything out to my garage I have kind of gotten my whole man cave put together just got to get a few more things cleaned up but i'll do like a collection tour I've got a lot of excited. I, I want to gonna start doing some more like top 10 lists um, with like my collection with figures I don't have. I don't, I've got a lot of ideas, a lot of stuff I'd like to bring to the channel. So I've just been trying to kind of make some room so that I can record that and uh, get that out to you guys. But outside of that, please continue to like, share, subscribe. I always appreciate it. And remember, you can't buy happiness. 
but you can buy more action figures. Figure dude out.